Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Another blessed day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Worthy. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Praise the Lord for another blessed day that He has created. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm sorry I missed class on last week, but I wasn't feeling to myself like I usually be, so I had to take a little break there. But thank God we're here again get into his word one more time because I, I guarantee the word is life changing it's, it's uh, enriching to your spirit and to your soul it enlightens and change and brightens your heart to get you in the will the purpose God has for your life to walk by faith into the promise of his word every day as we learn how to yield to his voice no matter what we go through in this life God is still faithful to deliver, to redeem, and to sanctify us by His Holy Spirit. We're willing to surrender and to listen to His voice. It's very important as children of the Most High God to learn how to listen to the voice of God, to allow the Holy Spirit to minister to your heart. Amen. So I'm going to read a devotion to open up in prayer tonight. Thank you, Lord God. I pray that you had a great day and that you allow God to bring you through victoriously and no matter what challenges you encounter today, you didn't let it pull you out of your character, but you're able to maintain a righteous stand in the Lord, knowing that he fights your battles for you. Glory to God. Our devotion says, I have promised to meet you in all your needs according to my glorious riches. Your deepest, most constant need is for my peace. I have planted peace in the garden of your heart, where I live. But there are weeds growing there too. Pride, worry, selfishness, unbelief. I am the gardener, and I am working to rid your heart of those weeds. I do my work in various ways. When you sit quietly with me, I shine the light of my presence directly into your heart. In this heavenly light, peace grows abundantly and weeds shrivel up. I also send trials into your life when you trust me in the midst of trouble. Peace flourishes and weeds die away. Thank me for troublesome situations. The peace they can produce far outweighs the trials you endure. That is a beautiful devotion for today to remind us to reflect on the promises of God in our lives. How every day he keeps us in his will. Every day he's protecting you. Every day he's guiding you. He takes you to work and back home. He gets you out of your bed every morning. He fills your heart with such a peace that the devil can't take away. No matter what we go through in life, we can always find our dependency on the Lord 
who's right there in the midst of our hearts every day to give us the power to stand on his word. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. So let's open my word of prayer. So Father, I thank you right now for your goodness, your mercy bestowed upon us, God. I thank you, Lord God, for bringing us through this day, oh God, as we learn how to rely on your strength in times of weakness. When our minds were discombobulated, our hearts were broken, God, you were right there in the midst of every situation, God, to show us your power, working things out in our favor. I speak healing in the atmosphere, God, right now, in every heart of every person, Father, who may be going through uh, sickness and diseases, God. Their bodies are being broken down. Their minds are in confusion. Their hearts are broken. Those who lost love us, God, who needs your company, spirit, right now, God, I release the power of the blood of the Lamb to heal in every area of their life, O oh God, that you will be exalted in the midst. And ask, O oh God, tonight as we stay your word, let the words of Christ dwell in our hearts richly in psalms and hymns, spiritual psalms, O oh God, that we have a sweet melody in our heart to praise your name, to glorify you, and give you, and give you exaltation to do your name. And I thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. Tonight we're going to talk about in our lesson. It's going to be a good one. We were, we were dealing with for the last few months breaking the threefold demonic cord of Jezebel. We've been dealing with that, that for quite a while now and I'm still not done with that book because I really feel I want to teach the whole book. I read the whole book twice, and I feel like I need to really go through these chapters and break down the hidden jewels that God has in his word to reveal to us as his children to convey in our lives to bring changes to us because we need to have ears to hear what the Spirit says to us because so many times we get comfortable in our mess, get comfortable dealing with strongholds and in bondage and, and can't find the freedom that God has for us because our hearts are separate and alienated from God. But tonight, I encourage you to open your hearts to receive what God has for you, to hear tonight. Let your eyes be attentive to see what God wants you to see, your mind to receive it, your heart to have it manifest in you, the things that God wants to do to change your life for the better. Because so many times we, we are challenged. We're challenged by different things in our lives, and we get stuck in a situation we can't get out of it but tonight god wants to open up our hearts to receive and graft the word of god with meekness that's the word of god that has the power to deliver to change your life heal your brokenness and mend the broken hearts god has the power to come into your life in a supernatural way to release promises blessings and favor miracles in your life as you have an expectation for God to do what he wants to do in your life. Amen. Glory to God. I tell you, this, this is a good good uh, book. If you don't have this book, you need to get this book, Breaking the Threefold Demonic Cord of Jezebel, Athaliah and Delilah, because we're living in a lifetime where there's spirits, and these spirits have to be broken off of your heart. They have to be broken. You have to get to the place in yourself where you recognize that I can't make it without God in my life. If you want God to do something in your heart tonight, you got to have a, a heart of expectation, ex expectation, because God is doing something right now by his spirit. And you got to have an open heart to receive it. Because many times God is doing something for us, and we don't see it happen with the natural eyes. We feel like God is not there. And we feel like God has an answer. But God has answered. He is answering. And he will continue to answer you in faith. When you have the God kind of faith, as Jesus told the disciples to speak to a fig tree, when he withered and died, he spoke to the tree when he came to find something to eat and with nothing on that tree but barrenness, it was no fruit. He cursed and said, no man shall eat from you ever again. So the same power, you can have that same power to speak to your mouth, to command them to move, and they will obey you. That's what he said in his word. You have the power to speak to your mountains cause your mouth to be uprooted, whatever that situation in your life that's plaguing you, that's burdening you, thing that's weighing you down, you have the power of God to speak to that thing and command it to loose its grip off your life. And it all starts with the mindset. 
whatever's on the mind that's controlling you, it controls your behavior and your responses. So you got to be willing to allow the Lord God to bring you to a place that he says, die to yourself daily, take up your cross and follow him. Amen. So we're going to get into our lesson in just a moment. I'm going to put it up on the screen as I do each week. Because this is going to be enriching, enriching to your spirits tonight. And I pray it's liberating to you and it brings life unto you tonight to bring you to a place of understanding and revelation from the Spirit of God. Amen. So here we go. Tonight we're going to talk about, last week, last couple of weeks ago we talked about um, the God of Baal. God being, uh, being a false God. Baal being a false God. That's what it was. And we talked about the different characteristics of the of the idol worship, the idol God. We talked about Baal. First, Baal was evil and uh, uh, had demonic powers. You know, it promotes rebellion. We talked about caused people to become impatient. You know, always in the TV, all in an uproar. Never have a waiting spirit when God. Wants to do something in your life. You can't wait on God. So you got to try to help God fix your situation yourself. Bless yourself the way you want to be blessed. And all the different things. Because that's the mindset of the enemy. We talked about demonic forces. Behind the Baal. The uh, idol worship of Baal. Because you know th this type of spirit. Is a spirit. That has many different familiar spirits attached to it. And those spirits. Cause you rise against leadership in your church. We talk about people. With lack of commitment. Because of the spirit, they're committed to sin and they turn from God, you know, and they follow idol worship, idol gods. We talked about uh, even things that devoted us uh, eating and drinking and playing on different things, mocking God. We talked about that. People turning from God's leadership, from his direction. And then the people become stiff necked. And tonight we're going to talk about stiff neck and rebellious. Stiff neck and rebellious. The book of Acts presents a New Testament description of Israel's rebellion against Moses and God. Our ancestors, what it says, our ancestors were unwilling to obey him. Instead, they pushed him aside. And in their hearts, they turned back to Egypt, saying to Aaron, make, us, make gods for us who will lead the way for us as Moses, as for this Moses who led us out from the land of Egypt. We do not know what has happened to him. So you got to understand that this is when the time when God was giving the Ten Commandments, and Moses went to the mountaintop to seek the Lord in behalf of the people. And because Moses stayed up there for quite a period of time, they became impatient. How many times have you become impatient? When you've been praying for God to do some, some things in your life, even change situations that are happening in your life, and you're crying out to God for deliverance, and it seems like God is not answering you. He's not moving by His Spirit fast enough to heal. He's not opening the door for you to get the job you're looking for. Your finances is all jacked up, and God hasn't came through to release of the uh, financial favor, a blessing in your life. So you go figure out how you can gravitate wealth yourself in the wrong things. Not in the right way God leads you by the Spirit, but according to your flesh. For example, some decide, well, they go sell drugs. They go prostitute. They go do different things, start selling merchandise just to get money. We have to be careful how the Spirit is so seductive to lure you away from the direction and leadership of the Holy Spirit. When God wants to bless you, sometimes it seems like God hasn't heard you. He's not moving in your situations. But we have to be patient. The key is patience. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. He shall strengthen your heart. God will provide. Jehovah Jireh. I was, I was looking at last night. His only son on the chosen uh, angel angel studio uh, uh, app. They have a uh, the series that came about the chosen, which is about the life of Christ. But they also have one called His Only Son. 
And it was very interesting how they depicted the story of Abraham, how God promised Abraham to be the father of many nations. Many times Abraham questioned God because he was pushing 100 years old and still didn't have a son. You got to understand, Abraham was about 80 years old when God first spoke to him. Until we're going to have a son. Get from your country to a place I'm going to show you. He told him to leave his place he was at, a residency, uproot, go to a different place. I'm going to show you. He didn't know where it was going, but he had to have faith to trust God. His wife started doubting when God said she's going to have a child because her womb was barren. So she became upset with God many times and, and she questioned God. And then on top of that, she decided, if you know the story, she decided to give her handmaiden to Abraham to have a relation with her to bring forth a baby that she thought was going to be the promised child. That was not the plan of God. It was her plan. So she got ahead of God trying to fix her situation the best way she can. We do it all the time when God is not moving in the way I expect him to move. So I got to fix my situation the best way I know how. You might be in a broken relationship and you've been trusting and praying for that mate. That, that The person seems to be rebellious. They just, they're stubborn, they're argumental, they're prideful. And the more you do to try to help them, the worse they become. You have to wait on God and you have to continue Keep living your life to the full the way God called you to live your life. And trust God to be the one to touch their heart, to change their life. And he'll do it. It's in his, it's in his own timing, according to his will, and according to his plan that he has set in motion for your life. So, so in the story... After he had the child Ishmael, then the wife became angry because of that. Because now they have a child out of, that's not what not God wanted to have, but some she wanted, trying to help God out. But thank God for grace. Because God still turned around. After seeing what had happened, what they have done, they don't they both have sinned against God. Because they doubted God. And God still turned around, touched her womb to have a child, which is Isaac, the promised child. All because Abraham still did not waver in his faith, even though he doubted God, he still had faith to believe God. Did you hear I just said? Sometimes as human beings, we're going to doubt the things that God does in our life and what God does not do for us. But it doesn't mean you don't have faith. Because we still got to have the God kind of faith to keep trusting and believing in his provisions and his promises to fulfill his word in our lives. So even when he had this child and God told him to sacrifice this child on Mount Moriah, Abraham still trusted God. And when he got to the mountain, the son said, Father, we have the wood, we have the fire, but where's the sacrifice? And Abraham had to, tell, had to tell his son that, I hate to tell you this, but the Lord told me you're the sacrifice. And the son looked at his father and said, is there any other way? And he said, no, son, this is what God has instructed me to do. I don't want to do it, but I, I trust God. So he tied his son up, laid him on the altar to sacrifice him. And God spoke at the last minute and said, Abraham, do not kill your son. There's a ram in the bush. All because he trusted God. We have to get to the place where we don't trust in idols. We don't trust in man, but we trust in God to the highest degree. Because man will fail you. Folks will let you down. But we have to continue to have our soul anchored in Jesus Christ to trust in God. Amen. So, at that time, they made a calf. Offered a sacrifice to the idol. You hear that? Moses is gone. Taking too long to come back. 
the people became impatient. They decided to go to Aaron, Moses accomplished, and convince him to do something he knew that's forbidden of God. Because you understand, Aaron was a priest. So he knew what God required, what God did not require. But Aaron, listening to the people, persuaded by the people, convinced by the people, manipulated by the people, connived by the people. What were we even talking about? The spirit of Jezebel. Manipulative, conniving, seducive, deceptive, witchcraft, idol worship. All this began to pour into his heart at this moment to listen to the people. Then it went on and says, they offered a sacrifice to the idol and reveled in works, revel in the works of their hands. They started doing whatever they wanted to do outside the will of God. All because that now their hearts have rebelled, became stiff-necked, stubborn, prideful, and turned against God. Because if you turn to serve and worship an idol God, you're denying the true and living God. And they denied the true living God because they chose to have a tangible, physical God they can touch. God wasn't good enough. Moses wasn't good enough. I talked about this before, how Moses was one that God used as an intercessor for the people because every time they found themselves in a jam, who got them out of it? Moses, because he interceded for them. And we have to get to the place where we realize the Spirit of God, how important it is to trust God and His Word even when God delays. But God turned away from them and handed them over to the worship the host of heaven. As it is written in the book of the prophets, did you offer me the slain victims and sacrifice 40 years in the wilderness, O house of Israel? See, this is something, how God, he loved them so much. Even in their foolish ways, he still allowed the spirit of God to bring conviction upon their hearts. Because you got to understand, the spirit of God was still there. Even during that time, the spirit of God was there. He, he, he dwelt among them. But he didn't dwell in them. But he was there. Go to Acts chapter 7. Chapter 7. And verse 40. Beginning at verse 40. Acts chapter 7 verse 40. I'll put this on the screen for you. Give me one second. Those who might not have a Bible at the moment. We're going to put this on the screen. So you follow along with what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So, here we go. Saying unto Moses, my faith, go up to verse uh, 39. It says, To whom our fathers would not obey, but thrust him from them, and in their hearts turn back again into Egypt. You understand what it's talking about here? They decided in themselves because Moses went to the mountain to speak to God in Mount Sinai. He was on the mountain conversating with God, getting the oracles. They became impatient in their hearts. You got to understand that the Egyptians were idol worshipers. And that's what they're referring to. It says, in their hearts turn back again into Egypt. They went back to the place of Egypt of slavery in their hearts where there was idol worship. Saying as Aaron, make us gods to go before us. For as for this Moses, which brought us out of the land of Egypt, we want not what has become of him. And we it says, and they made a calf in those days and offered sacrifice unto the idols and rejoiced in the works of their hands. You hear that? They rejoiced in this mess. Became happy, pleasing, satisfied. 
Verse 42. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets. O ye house of Israel, ye have offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of 40 years in the wilderness. Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Molech. Molech was fire god. And the stars of your god Rephim, Rephim, figures which he made to worship them, and I carried you away beyond Babylon. Beyond Babylon. What he's talking about, because their hearts were so prone to follow these idols, God said, you know what? I led you into captivity because of that. Because you failed to trust me and you started worshiping these other idols that other nations worship. And that's what God is talking about. And we have to get to a place in ourselves we realize that it's so important as children of God to not get to the place where we get blinded and persuaded by other people to deny the God you serve. Listen to this. Number C, it says, Have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of 40 years in the wilderness? Question 24. Next, Acts 7, chapter verse 49. The answer to this question is no. If it had to be whether Israel was upright and free from all idolatry in their hearts and act. That's what it's talking about. Because their hearts turned from God. So they were out of order with God. So they did not trust God enough to offer him the sacrifice he was looking for. It was mainly with their hearts. Because remember when, when God told Moses to tell the children of Israel, he said, Hear, O Israel, Deuteronomy chapter 6, I believe it is. So hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one God. Thou should love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, thy mind, and thy strength. Because God was looking for the sacrifice of them surrendering themselves unto him to follow him. But so many times we get to the place where we're comfortable being rebellious, we become stiff neck. That stiff neck is a rebellious, callous heart. Your heart becomes hardened against truth. So when God wants to bring truth into your heart, you reject the truth because the sin in your heart is so prevalent, you don't want to follow after God. So we got to get back in our place, begin to serve God with our hearts, mind, soul, will, and emotion, giving everything about us to obedience to follow him and serve him. It's very important as a child of God to serve the Lord God with your entire being. Glory to God. So let's get back to our lesson. So here it says, when the people demanded to have a God, The, yeah, they could see the idolatry brought such a spirit of deception that turned God away. Isn't that something? When our hearts become callous, we become blinded. When you have a hardened heart and blindness, you're in a critical uh, condition because now you're in a place where God can bring destruction upon your life and allow the enemy to wreak havoc in your life to destroy you. All because you allow the enemy to deceive you, manipulate you, and turn you from the truth. You got to get back to the place where you recognize when you're out of order with God, get back right with God. Get back right with God because God is the one that has the power and ability to set you free. You have to want to be free. Freedom is not forced. It's a choice. It's your decision. What do you want to do? Many times when Jesus came to people to heal and deliver, he always asked them a question. What do you want from me? And they would answer his question with what they're looking for and expecting him to do. And many times he said, be it done to you according to your faith. Because it's your faith that's anchored in the Lord Jesus Christ 
that produces the fruit of righteousness for the heart of expectation to receive what God has for you to receive. So God turned away. Their rebellious caused God to give them over to darkness, death, and the idols they serve. You hear that? You don't want God to turn away from you. If God turns his back away from you because of your callous, stubborn, rebellious, prideful heart, you're in a dangerous place. That's why I said critical. It's a critical condition. You're in a spiritual critical condition. Like when people have a critical illness and they put them in ICU, they're critical. They're facing death. We get to the place in our spirits where we are facing death because of rebellion. That's why he said... God, he, he, said he turned away from them and he allowed the darkness to take over and allow them to worship the idols they serve because they were bringing destruction upon themselves. We become our own destruction. We have a choice to live or die. And many times our actions show the opposite response to what our mouth is saying. We tell God, I want to serve you. I want to bless you. I want to love you. I want to care for you. And I thank you for all you've done for me. But then I'm mummer. I'm growing up complaining. I'm fussing all the time. I'm not at peace because my heart has turned from God. That's a bad place to be. What a horrible thought. How tormenting it would be to know that God would actually turn away and deliver us unto the hands of Satan. Isn't that something? God will allow you to be given to the hands of the enemy because of your rebellion. The spirit of rebellion gets you into a dark place when now you're blinded from seeing God and you can't hear God anymore. You're not speaking a word no more over your life, over your situation, your circumstances. You're allowing yourself to be corrupted by the enemy from the inside. I said it last time, decay. You're decaying from the inside out through sin. Sin becomes like a poison in the bloodstream. You know, I was, I was sitting now earlier and I was just sitting here thinking. Sometimes I sit and I just don't do nothing. I just be still, just hear the voice of God and I just begin to think. And I was thinking about how when we devour certain things in our bodies that's not of God or breathe in certain things that produce toxins in our body, it becomes poisonous to the bloodstream and begins to manifest and begin to spread throughout the whole viral system of the body in your veins. It gets in your veins. And it gets all throughout your bloodstream and gets to the neural system, the brain cells. Everything be impacted by the poison. And when God began to speak, he says, there are many people that's in my house every Sunday lifting up their dirty hands saying they're worshiping me, but they're full of poison. So their hearts it's saying, I don't want you. Their mouth is saying, I'm worshiping you, but they're actually showing something totally different because they're full of poison. He says, but one thing about it, the blood of Jesus, when the word of God is spoken, it releases the, the viral toxic out of your body. It's like, you know how you take an injection? You know, you get an injection for the flu shot, the pneumonia shot, shingle shots, and all this stuff, right? These, what these are, are, are what's the emanation? So these are like something that you have to have to counteract certain conditions in your body, right? So, so you go to the doctor and you say, God, I got a, a pain in my lower back. Well, we got to give you an infusion. We got to we uh, do an injection. So they schedule you to come back at a later date to have an injection and then inject cortisone in the area of your body to cause the nerves to be deadened temporarily to stop the pain from spreading. God has a toxic of the Holy Spirit that counterattack 
the toxins of the enemy. His is a holy toxin that comes into your body, but it's not poisonous. His is a healthy toxin. You know how we do detox? Detox where it purges out all the things. You want. So God has a detox, a spiritual detox that comes into your bloodstream and you get to drive out all the influences and the negativity, the agents of the enemy impacting your bloodstream to destroy you from inside out and purify you. God knows exactly what we need when we need it. He knows how to perfect the thing that concerns you. And if God turns his back on you like he did with Jesus on the cross, Jesus took on all the sin of the world. And God has to not look upon his own son, had to reject his own son at that moment on that cross. My God. Can you imagine being in a place where you totally reject it? And you feel abandoned like you're by yourself to suffer. There's nobody else there to, to care and understand what you're going through. and You're just isolated. I remember being in the hospital one time because I had pneumonia. So they put a, a, a sign on the door that anyone entered this room, and plus they put me in, a, in like a bubble where they had to close the room in with a plastic bubble to where you, when you come in the room, you had to have on the smock, you had to have on the mask, you know, had your shoes covered, all that to go into this room. Because they didn't want anyone else to be contaminated. The Holy Spirit is so good and so powerful. He knows exactly how to purify, to cleanse, to change, to manifest the anointing in your life to make you better. When Jesus was rejected on that cross, when Jesus died, the world was darkened until Jesus died. But then when he went into the grave, hallelujah, and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, the S-O-N radiated the whole world with the glory of God that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but should have everlasting life like the Israelites many of us today remain stiff necked and rebellious are you stiff necked and rebellious tonight are you prideful are you mistreating folk even the people that serve you and help aid your care, your well-being, are you mistreating them? That's stiff neck. That's rebellious. Because the master is no better than the slave. The slave is no better than the master. We are all the servants of the Most High God, and we have to treat one another with honor. We got to love one another and care for one another the way Christ loves us. And many times, we think we're living a holy, righteous life. We're really deceiving ourselves. When we're not treating folk with God says to treat them. You got a lot of stingy folk in the church. There are a lot of people in the body of Christ who don't know how to receive help from other people because the pride won't let them. We have to get to the place in ourselves. We humble ourselves. The words are humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Let's not be rebuked by the Lord for remaining stiff-necked and uncircumcised in the heart and ears. You know what that means? Uncircumcised means you ain't been cut. Circumcision is what they do to little boys when they're born again. When they're when they born, not born again, when they're born, and they cut away the foreskin to keep them cleansed. It's a part of a ceremony that God has initiated through Moses. We have to get to the place where allow the Holy Spirit to circumcise our hearts that's cutting away the flesh that you can be filled with the Spirit of God, be guided, controlled, living, standing firm in the faith of Jesus Christ. Then it goes on a little further. 
resisting the Holy Spirit. And as our fathers, killing those who foretold the coming of the just one. Ain't that something? The manifestation of the word of God, the prophecy spoken thousands of years ago. It's the very same thing that's manifesting in our lives today when you receive it by faith. Acts 7, 51 and 52. Let's go a little further here. It says, Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. You hear that? So just because your mother resisted God, your father resisted God, you don't have to resist God. If they never was born again, never gave your life to Christ, you can give your life to Christ. Because salvation is for whosoever will. If you're willing to receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, he'll come into your heart and change your life for the better. 52. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which show before the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. Because the fathers were rebellious, didn't want to hear the word of God, receive the word of God, they rejected the word of God from the prophets. They killed the prophets. And that's what he's talking about. Don't you get to the same attitude, have the same heart as your forefathers did that led them to death. Because rebellion will kill you. Stubborn will keep you isolated. And it will lead you to a pitfall of despair, to the grave. Dear ones, let's give God no reason. Hallelujah to God. To turn away and deliver us to the hands of our enemy. Don't give God any reason to let you go. Because one thing about God, God has the power to, to save you, has the power to reject you. And when he rejects you, he even still gives you a chance to repent. We have a choice. God says, I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. You hear that? Even when God rejects you, he still gives you a choice to come back. He wished that none should perish, but all come to repentance. That's how much he loves us. He said, I set before, I presented to you a plea deal that you, if you just receive my terms and conditions and requirements, you can live. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. By choosing life, we allow God to heal our hearts by choosing life. We, have, we allow God to heal our families, bring salvation to our homes. By choosing life, we're letting God know that I'm serious about giving up my life to follow you. The 12 disciples forsaken all they had to follow Jesus, even those who were married. They forsook everything for the cause of Christ. Are you willing to give up your life for Christ? Everything that you have, everything that you have done, and the things you haven't done, are you willing to give it all up and give God your heart tonight? Listen to this. If, however, we choose not to fully allow God, then 
We are choosing to remain stiff-necked and rebellious. It's a choice. God shall accept it for your life and death. The choice is yours. Are you going to continue to reject him? Or are you going to give your life to him to follow him? You need to make a decision, a decisive decision. I'm going to follow the Lord all the days of my life. And God, I will serve until the day I die. Because one thing about God, he loves us so much that he wished none should perish. He wants us all to come to the place of recognizing, being convicted by the Holy Spirit to allow the Lord to come into your heart to change your life for the better. Amen. It's up to you tonight to make the decision to let the Lord fill you with his peace and mind and strength. Follow me as I follow Christ, as the word says. If you follow Christ, the Lord will make himself known to you in such a supernatural way where nothing in this world can ever take the place of Christ in you. He's faithful to hear you when you call upon him in faith, faithful to redeem, to sanctify, to the Holy Spirit. It's up to you to make a decision to hear his voice and obey his voice. And follow him. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient. Bearing with one another in love. That's another scripture tonight. Ephesians 4 verse 2. Ephesians 4 verse 2. When you humble yourself. Philippians 2 verse 3. Do nothing out of selfish ambitions or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, values others above yourself. When you walk in humility, you're putting others before yourself. You're putting God before yourself. You're trusting God His Word. And when you trust God His Word, God promises there's nothing too hard for Him. He will answer you and set you free and put you on the right track. Colossians chapter 3, 3 verse 12. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly beloved, close yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And when you allow the Spirit of God to bring to a place of humility, conviction, surrenderance, your life will change for the better. Amen. So we're going to end up in on this point tonight. Next we're going to pick up. Bill wants, wants it now. Bill wants this now. So you get a chance. Look, up, look it up in the book. And allow God. We're in chapter 3 in the book. So let the spirit of God really minister to your heart. Well, I pray this has been a blessing to you tonight. I pray it's been a blessing to you and that you have been enriched in your spirit tonight and it helped empower you to keep moving forward in the promises of God's word. Amen. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for this word tonight, oh God. I pray that it change our hearts, change our minds, change our lives for the better. Cleanse us from all sin and iniquity. Come into our hearts, oh God, tonight and be our Lord and Savior. And I thank you, Lord God, for giving us another chance to do things right that we didn't do on yesterday. And I ask that you would be glorified in the life that we live, that I will live and my descendants will live, and our children's children will live, and declare the works of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Again, praise God Almighty. Glory to God. Pray this has really empowered you tonight to study your word. Study to show yourself approved unto God. In work when you need not be ashamed, but rightly by the word of truth. That means you got to dissect the word of God. Get a revelation. Get understanding. Don't just read the Bible. Just be reading it. Find something that you can read that will be valuable to you. Something you can cherish. Something you can put in your spirit to help you grow. Become better. Might be a bad habit. Find scriptures dealing with that bad habit. 
and allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you. And I guarantee you'll find something in the Word that will help give you enlightenment on how to deal with strongholds and issues in your own personal life. Amen. Does anyone have any questions tonight on here? Any comment? Any other comment? I see all the comments on here tonight. God bless you all for coming on. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. But this has really, really been good to you tonight. Amen. So, I see everyone here is born again. Is there anybody that you need me specifically pray for that I can add on my prayer list? Just inbox me on Facebook Messenger the names of the individuals I add on my daily prayer list. We have a prayer list that I do in the mornings. Uh, I add on a prayer call, conference call each morning when I'm on there. And we do pray for every individual that is on our list. So if you got any names you need to add to the, the prayer list, inbox me under my name on this live on this live. You send on the message on here as well, and I'll get up his uh, also to add to the list. So, but I pray you all stay encouraged, be enriching your spirit, and continue to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord. Lift his counsel upon you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. And may the Lord give you peace. Until next week, the Lord said the same. We'll resume again at the 6th hour. You all have a blessed night. Shalom. Peace be to you.